Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. Presenting to you the daily quiz for 23rd of November 2022. But before we begin, here is a gentle reminder to join our official Telegram channel. Here you will receive daily current affairs updates, various quizzes, updates on our new initiatives, workshops, and much more. All you have to do is click on the link given in the description box of this video to join our Telegram channel. Now let us begin and take a look at the first question for today. Which of the following pairs is or are correctly matched? There are biodiversity heritage sites and the states that they are present in. Number one, Nallur Tamarind Groove, Andhra Pradesh. Number two, Ambaragudda, Karnataka. Number three, Aminpur Lake, Uttar Pradesh. Number four, Arithapatti, Tamil Nadu. What is the context? According to this article in the Hindu newspaper today, Arithapatti in Tamil Nadu has become the first site in the state to be declared a biodiversity heritage site. I will tell you more about Arithapatti biodiversity site, but first let us understand what exactly is a biodiversity heritage site. The biodiversity heritage sites are well defined areas that are unique ecologically fragile ecosystems. They could be terrestrial, coastal or inland waters and marine ecosystems that have rich biodiversity. For instance, they could have high endemism or presence of a rare and threatened species or a keystone species or any species of evolutionary significance. Otherwise, they could be home to biological components that are represented by fossil beds that have significant cultural, ethical or aesthetic values. In a nutshell, these biodiversity heritage sites are rich biodiversity areas and are important components of local ecosystems which are being conserved. Now coming back to this place and news that is Arithapatti. This is a site that is known for its ecological as well as historical significance. Let me explain. This site houses about 250 species of birds including the Lager Falcon, the Shaheen Falcon and also Bernalese Eagle. Also, Indian Pangolin, Slender Loris, Pythons can also be spotted here. And this area is surrounded by a chain of seven hillocks that serve as a watershed and help in charging lakes, natural springs and also check dams. And one of them are Anai Kondan Tank. This tank was built during the reign of Pandyan kings in the 16th century and therefore this site is of ecological and historical significance. It also houses many megalithic structures, rock cut temples, Tamil Brahmi scripts and also Jain beds. Therefore this site has been declared as a biodiversity heritage site. Now coming back to our question. The Nallur Tamarind Grove that is popularly believed to be a relic of the Chola dynasty is located in Karnataka and not Andhra Pradesh. So one becomes incorrect. Ambaragudda in Karnataka is known for its Chola vegetation and grasslands and this is also a biodiversity heritage site. So number two is correct. The Aminpur Lake which is a biodiversity heritage site located in Telangana was country's first water body to be designated as a biodiversity heritage site. So this also is incorrect. And Arithapati as we just discussed is in Tamil Nadu. So the right answer would be option B 2 and 4 only. Moving on to question number 2. Which of the following statements best describes project Unnati? Option A, a capacity building program on nano satellite development. Option B, a skilling project intended to upgrade the skill base of the Mahatma Gandhi Narega beneficiaries. Option C, a project launched to address the low enrollment of girl students in prestigious engineering institutions. Option D, an initiative for skill development in the environment and forest sector aimed at enabling the youth to gain employment or self-employment using the network and expertise of Envis hubs. Why this question? This article in the Hindu newspaper today talks about Project Unnati. The article says that the Project Unnati has faced a less than a lukewarm response. The project seems to be very slow in meeting its objectives. Let me explain more about this project that is Project Unnati in detail. 
Project Unnati is a skilling project which is intended at upgrading the skill base of Mahatma Gandhi Narega beneficiaries. But why you might ask? This is to ensure that they can move from the current partial employment of 100 days which is guaranteed under Manrega to a full-time employment and hence reduce their dependency on the Manrega scheme. So, one adult member of a household who has completed 100 days of work under Mahatma Gandhi Narega in the previous financial year will be given skill development training under this project that is Project Unnati. So, basically, this is a skill development project for improving the livelihoods of the neediest Manrega beneficiaries by providing them skill either for self-employment or for wage employment. Therefore, the right answer to our question here would be option B. Here, some of you might mark option A as the right answer. Why? Because you would have read that Unnati is Unispace Nano Satellite Assembly and Training by ISRO, which is a capacity building program on nano satellite development. That is where you will have to be careful while reading the question. Is it Project Unnati? Or is it Unnati program? Is it Ujwala Yojana? Or is it Ujjawala scheme? While the names sound similar and look similar, these could be completely different projects or schemes. So do pay attention while you mark your answers. And as we've discussed here, option B will be the right answer to our question. Moving on to question number 3. Consider the following statements with respect to Gamosa. Number 1. It is also known as Japi and is an essential part of Bihu festival. Number 2. The Uka Gamosa is a special variety decorated with floral motifs to be gifted as a memento or is used during festivals. Number 3. They are mostly made of Muga silk. How many of the given statements is or are correct? Why this question? This article in the Hindu newspaper today has a mention of Gamosa and hence this question. See, the Gamosa and Japi are both articles of significance to the people of Assam. The Gamosa is generally a white rectangular piece of cloth with primarily a red border on three sides and red woven motifs on the fourth side. While it is commonly made from cotton yarn, they are also made of pat silks. So traditionally, there are two types of gamosas. The uka gamosa or the plain gamosa, which is used on a daily basis and phulam gamosa, decorated with floral motifs to be gifted as a memento or during festivals like Bihu in Assam, right? Coming back to our question, statement number one becomes incorrect because japi and gamosa are completely different. Japi is a traditional conical hat from Assam. And while Gamosa is used during Bihu festival, it is called as Bihu one and not Japi. So one is incorrect. Now coming to statement number two. The full one Gamosa and not the Uka Gamosa are used during special occasions. So statement number two is also incorrect. Statement number three again is incorrect as it is made from Pat silk mostly. So the right answer to our question here would be option D, none of the above because the question is asking us for correct statements. Now here's a task for you for today. The task is to let me know which are the famous types of silks from Assam. We've already seen a mention of two in our discussion. Comment with the third name. Now moving on to question number four. Lachit Borpukan is associated with which of the following battles? Number 1. Battle of Samugar Number 2. Battle of Chausa Number 3. Battle of Saraighat Number 4. Battle of Alaboy Why this question? This snippet from the Indian Express newspaper today says that this year marks the 400th birth anniversary of Lachit Borpukan who was a commander of the Ahom forces and an icon of Assamese nationalism. And hence we have taken up this question for discussion. Now going back to the history. The Ahom kings ruled large parts of what is now Assam between the 13th and the 19th centuries. Between 1615 and 1682, the Mughal Empire made a series of attempts to annex the Ahom Kingdom. In one such attempt, the Battle of Alaboy was fought in 1669. In this battle, 
Borpukan, who was a commander of the Ahom forces, relied on his knowledge of the territory and engaged with the Mughals in guerrilla warfare. In the Battle of Saraigat of 1671, he enticed the Mughals into a naval battle and defeated the Mughals. So while Lachat Borpukan is known for his leadership in the 1671 Battle of Saraigat that thwarted the attempts by the Mughal forces under the command of Ram Singh I to take over a home kingdom, he is also associated with the Battle of Alaboy. Therefore, the right answer to our question would be option C, 3 and 4 only. Now let us take up a previous year question from prelims paper 2017. Consider the following statements. India has ratified the Trade Facilitation Agreement of the World Trade Organization. The Trade Facilitation Agreement is a part of the WTO's Bali Ministerial Package of 2013. Trade Facilitation Agreement came into force in January 2016. Which of the statements given above is or are correct? See, this question was asked in 2017 exam because the Trade Facilitation Agreement came into force on 22nd of February 2017 following its ratification by two-thirds of the WTO members. So what exactly is this TFA? The Trade Facilitation Agreement of WTO sets out measures for effective cooperation between customs and other appropriate authorities on trade facilitation and customs compliance issues. So this particular agreement was negotiated under the World Trade Organization's Bali Ministerial Package of 2013. And India ratified this in 2016. But when did it come into force? It came into force in the year 2017. So statement number 3 is incorrect while statement number 1 and 2 are correct. Therefore, the right answer to our question would be option A, 1 and 2 only. Now, let us take up the fact of the day for today, which is CITES or Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora. What is the context? This article in the Indian Express newspaper today states that India abstained from voting on the reopening of ivory trade at the ongoing conference of sites. So India chose to abstain and not vote against the reopening of ivory trade. Right? It is in this backdrop that we are going to discuss about sites or Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Flora and Fauna. See, this CITES is an international agreement between the governments to ensure that international trade in flora and fauna does not threaten the survival of species. This convention was entered into force in the year 1975. So, by becoming a party to CITES, the member or the party voluntarily agrees to be bound by this convention that is CITES. So, how exactly does CITES work? CITES works by subjecting international trade in specimens of selected species to certain controls. So all the imports, exports as well as re-export of species covered under CITES must be authorized through a permit system or a license system. For this purpose, the species that are covered by CITES are listed in three appendices. And this is done according to the degree of protection they need. These are Appendix 1, 2 and 3. Appendix 1 includes all those species that are threatened with extinction. So the trade in specimens of these species under Appendix 1 of CITES is permitted only and only in exceptional circumstances. Now coming to Appendix 2. Appendix 2 includes species that are not necessarily threatened with extinction but in which trade must be controlled in order to avoid utilization incompatible with their survival. So, to prevent them from reaching that point of extinction, these species are added under Appendix 2. Appendix 3 contains species that are protected in at least one country which has asked the other site members or parties for assistance in controlling the trade. Right? So, through this system, sites affords varying degree of protection to more than 38,000 species, making it one of the largest and oldest conservation and sustainable use agreements that are in existence. Please remember that sites was drafted as a result of a resolution that was adopted in 1963 at a meeting of the members of the International Union for Conservation of Nature 
or IUCN. Before we end this session for today, do let me know in the comment section where is the site secretariat located. Do post your answers in the comment section. That is all for today. Thank you for being with us. Keep watching and keep learning.